What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business, a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're engaged, and we like to get scared together. Uh, yeah, this is the Dead Meat Podcast. No, you did not misread the title or the thumbnail or any <laughs> label on this episode. Let me, before I even say the title again of what we're reviewing, I'm going to read just a little bit from Roger Ebert's review of this to, to justify, I think, why we are covering this film four stars by the way from roger ebert his he had like his internal logic to me is so funny uh all right here we go note i said the film is the most violent i have ever seen it will probably be the most violent you have ever seen this is not a criticism but an observation the film is unsuitable for younger viewers but works powerfully for those who can endure it the MPAA's R rating is definitive proof that the organization either will never give the NC-17 rating for violence alone or was intimidated by the subject matter. Yeah, <laughs> this movie is one of the goriest films ever made. Of course, we're talking about Passion of the Christ, yep. released in 2004. And if you're wondering why the hell we're covering this movie, one, well, it's Easter weekend. Uh, we're recording this uh, the weekend of Easter, which feels... I don't know if it feels sacrilegious or correct. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? We're treading in weird waters here. But I just, I joked about doing this movie for a review like a year ago. And then someone brought it up to me on Twitter, reminded me I made that joke. And I said, you know, I'm going to commit to that bit. I'm going to commit. You committed. And we're going to review this absolute snuff film of a movie <laughs> i think a reviewer called it a snuff film yeah <laughs> gave it a bad review <laughs> but yeah passion of the christ you've seen this before my mother took us to the theaters when it was out yeah we were raised catholic and my mom tried in uh starts and stops throughout my life to revitalize our catholicism and i guess one of those attempts involved going to see the big jc suffering on the big screen yeah yeah just to really feel the guilt, the Catholic guilt of how. But when when I saw it, I was fifteen years old, or about to be fifteen. Yeah. And we... you had already seen horror movies. Oh and yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. This Gore was, was yeah, not... yeah. Roger Ebert talking about this is the most violent movie any of us will ever see. No, no. I disagree with strong that, disagree. At least. It and is gory. Though. Sure, but uh, yeah, the the big difference there is I was almost fifteen. We had people tweeting at us that they were shown this film when they were very young, sometimes as young as six, seven, That's eight. That's crazy That's to me. fucked up to me, man. Because even That's watching- That's manipulation the, to me. Even watching this now, after having seen so much on-screen gore, because it's my literal job, <laughs> I there were parts of this where I was cringing and, yeah. and looking away- because it's so, it's just so realistic. I mean, when they whip that flail of blades into the side yeah. of his body, and it, it gets caught in his side mm -hmm. like a like a, you're hitting a shank of beef, Oof. and then they have to rip it out. It's bad. Yeah, it's it's nonstop violence. It is. It, most of this movie's violence, which is why I feel justified in covering it because it it feels and there are weird little horror elements too, which I'd heard about, but I just forgot we're in this. Yeah, and that's the thing is a violent movie doesn't necessarily make it horror, and I will right. I will not call this a horror movie. I think of this no, as no, this, this is a bit. This yeah, is a this bit. is a bit it's, that it's we're not actually to. a horror film. But... So don't come at me with your John Wick request and bullshit no, like and that. And also, this is the podcast where I make the rules and I can pick whatever stupid ass movies <laughs> I want to right. cover. So, uh, but th in argument of covering this is Judas's weird little Blumhouse house side plot yeah where there are scary faces about i was fucking freaked out man i was scared I was as too. hell i got scared by those little kids yeah who accost him in the street and then they have little old man faces on themselves it's so scary yeah it's the scariest thing yeah there are this movie is 90 percent gore fast and then 10 percent like Blumhouse February release. <laughs> it's so bizarre. Yeah, man. And I remember all that stuff because I, I remember pretty vividly when this came out because I was in high school and I mean, it was huge. I mean, this movie made a ton of money. It was the highest grossing R-rated movie for a very long time. until In the US until Deadpool. Mm -hmm. Worldwide, I think some 
action movie from China, I think. But yeah, this thing made this bank, made man. So much money, and it was such a big deal. I mean, the controversy of it alone, I remember very vividly to the point where. So we we both grew up Catholic. We talk about that on the podcast a lot. Um, weirdly, I I think Catholicism informs a lot of horror. It's it's very present in horror. The Exorcist, lots of possession movies. You have the Catholic priest coming in to save the day. It's the the guilt of Catholicism, and on top of all the violent imagery, it lends itself so well to horror. I think it's bred like a whole generation of horror fanatics. But besides all that, like like when I when this movie came out. I, you know, throughout childhood and when this came out, I was just young enough to where I still had to get my parents' permission to go see stuff because I couldn't drive yet, you mm-hmm. know? I I would have to have friends come get me, like older friends come get me. Or, so, you know, I'd have to have my parents go take me to movies still. Um, so when this came out, I remember my mom especially being like, we're not going to see this because I couldn't, I couldn't go see violent movies. So I didn't see any horror movies growing up. And I think maybe that's another reason why I lump this in with horror films is because this also (laughs) was in that category of movies that we absolutely were not going to go see in the theater because she just thought it was so gratuitous and exploitative. It is gratuitous, and, man. Yeah. And the fact that people are shown this from a young age I think to what? Show the suffering that Jesus did for people? Yes. That, and like, I'm sorry, but there there are some people who I was say, uh, I saw them justifying it by saying, well, that's what Jesus went through. Sure. There were not these this level of detail in the Bible. There's not. I did read the... New Testament to prep for this, specifically just the four gospels. I didn't read like the letters to the Romans. It was the best gospel. I I don't know. I kind of enjoyed Matthew. Maybe it was because it was first. And by then I wasn't like, cool, I'm reading this thing about bread for the third time. (laughs) Uh, And then Luke or no, John is weird because it's, so different is than the John other the ones. different one? It's the not synoptic gospel. Because okay. there's the three synoptic gospels, That's which right. are like basically the same thing. And mm-hmm. then there's John, which is weird and has its own little side plots. Although that one is where you get um, Lazarus and you get Jesus turning water into wine. Wait, so-, so Matthew, Luke, and who's the other one? Mark. Mark. So those guys like did they shared the homework assignment. Yeah. And just like slightly altered there's, their language. And it's, it's a whole debate on which one came first, but I think the most commonly accepted theory is that Mark is the oldest, and then Matthew and Luke kind of took inspiration from that, and then and then John was like, "I'll do the I'll do the project on my own." John was a little bit, I think, work. later, and is kind of like, "This is for a not Jewish audience." Oh, I think the Synoptic Gospels are a bit more for other Jews, and then John is. I could be wrong here, but that's kind of what I get from Dude, this those. this Bible's got fucking maps in it? Yeah. Wow, you can tell that this was the Bible that I had got for annotations. a college course. So in terms <laughs> of the the accuracy, and <laughs> we were laughing at the, yeah, the, the John Wick cabinet of weapons that the Romans have when they're whipping Jesus. <laughs> they got to go and like, ooh, which one are we going to use? Are we going to use the Negan baseball bat with barbed <laughs> wire on it? But um, so, okay, the Bible does say, at least in... um. Matthew, which is the one that, again, I think I liked the best and paid the most attention to, that, yeah, he's whipped, he's scourged, 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 scourged scourged before he is crucified. And interestingly, because I remember when we were watching this, they have the big, the whip, which is essentially like a cat of nine tails, but each ending of the whip has like hooks on it. And that's what they're, it's disgusting. It's what what they're whipping him with. They're ripping his skin away. It really, it is like gruesome and it shows it just so starkly. Um, But uh, interestingly there was, and I wasn't expecting this, but there was an annotation uh, in Matthew, at least where the author is saying back in Roman times, the uh, being whipped was brutal and they had whips where they had endings on them made of either bone or something that would purposely they would tear away skin so that is historically accurate it turns out so i guess i'll give them that i don't know the baseball bat with the barbed wire is necessarily accurate. I don't think it's bar- it's like nails through it. It right? is okay, yeah. you're right. Barbed it's not wire cactus jack. I was gonna out. say barbed wire was invented in like the eighteen hundreds, Mel Gibson. What are we doing? The the devil's wire. Uh but um, 
<laughs> so I don't know. So like, yeah, I guess there's some accuracy to it, but it also is just so gratuitous. It's and, relentless. And like, He's walking around this whole movie with one of his eyes swelled yeah. shut from just getting punched in the face repeatedly. Mm-hmm. And that was, yeah, a big reason for the controversy when this came out. And yeah, I, I totally get why I wasn't allowed to go see this because, and I remember my mom's reasoning being like, this is not why we read the Bible. Like we, we follow Jesus's teachings and like, you know, yeah, it's important that he died, but that's- it, ju- it just seems a little, you know, it's guilting you in to being like, don't you feel bad? And well, don't you want to follow the, his word? Cause well, he went through this shit for you. And <laughs> to, to really, um, no pun intended hammer home that point. Oh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> and, <laughs> to really hammer that home, it's Mel Gib- it is Mel Gibson's hands nailing Jesus yes, to the cross. That's right. uh, Jesus' hands and feet. Director cameo. Because Mel Gibson says this is what we did to him. This is like, you know, my sins did this to him. So cool. Very cool. Yeah. I would rather watch Hacksaw Ridge. Man, okay, I I did. I went and read uh, at least Mel Gibson's Wikipedia and Jim Caviezel's because I was curious about what his deal is. Because I remember the man who plays Jesus. Yeah, he plays Jesus, and I remember he kind of just had a whole career. I think after this, like he's just he's the guy who played Jesus. I think he in like Christian circles is still really famous. He yeah. does. He's like he's sense. a super religious guy. Mel Gibson also extremely religious, very Roman Catholic. Yeah, I went and reread Mel Gibson's Wikipedia because he's one of those famous people who like we're giving another chance, you know, like Hacksaw Ridge and stuff. A few other chances. A few I other, feel, right? He's Hasn't had, there been he's a, had a bunch of second a number of chances. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's an asshole. I was like, is he as bad as I remember? And then I read, and I'm like, oh, man, it's not good. Well, I know he had the drunken tirade when he was pulled over, and that had anti-Semitic language That was language the thing that, it. like, ended his career where he... Well, temporarily, Temporarily, least, temporarily. Yeah. but that was the big thing, I think. He got was pulled. that after this movie? Yes. It must have been right after, right? It was it in, was... like, 2006. Okay, yeah, that sounds right. So and it was then... right after this, and he gets pulled over, and he's yelling at the cop. He's drunk, and then he says something about... He asks the cop if he's a Jew, and he's like, Jews are responsible for all the bad things in the world and it was like okay dude <laughs> and then has he had any other oh yes he okay, his ex-wife he took out a restraining order and thought. those voicemails a... leaked where and i can't even say what he said to her you can go read wikipedia oh i will not c word and stuff Mm-mm. oh it's worse wow think like later in the alphabet it's also a slur <laughs> okay it's not good i don't okay. i'm not even gonna you can go read his wikipedia oh is that about him no never mind okay He's had, he's had a lot. Yeah. And then Sugar Tits. I forget. Sugar Tits. I forget That's when I was Sugar Tits was from. Yeah. I do appreciate the coining of Sugar Tits. Um, sure. Because I use it um, in my life. I think it's a very funny word. Yeah, he shouldn't have, name, he shouldn't have done it? it, but yeah, for sure. Team <laughs> Sugar Tits. Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> so, yeah. That's Although I will movie. say I like Taxar Ridge. I like Taxar Ridge, too. It was pretty fucking cool. He's like, you know... He fucking sucks, but then he can make a good movie. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the most Hollywood thing I've ever said. <laughs> he fucking sucks. But he, he makes, makes a, a good movie. damn good movie. <laughs> now, I enjoyed Hacksaw Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge, I think, is closer to the feelings that maybe he wanted me to feel during this. Yeah, because Hacksaw Ridge has a whole bunch of violence, but it made me really feel for the the poor young lads who were in that war. It's, and I mean, the, the main character is a pacifist. It's yes, and he's not, a medic in I mean, a he's war a real person. Mm-hmm. And well, his... Jesus is also a real person well, yeah, historically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. but no, that's what I was just clear. Yeah, the mm-hmm. like this guy in Hacksaw Ridge actually existed, and he... Instead of fighting in the war, he refused to ever fight. But instead, he would go. He ran and like saved people from saved injured people that originally were just going to be left behind mm-hmm. because they were so injured. And he saved like so many people's lives. It's a really good it's a story, great movie and too, it made man. me feel more of the. Uh, it made me it made me feel more moved by the faith depicted in that film than is depicted in Passion of the Christ. And what do you think about this movie? Didn't Because for a lot of people, it works. And A lot of people love this movie, and yeah. it's fine. And again, and I also want to clarify, this is not going to be an episode where we're having like a theological debate. That's not yeah. what this is. <laughs> and if we're making fun of the movie, we're not making fun of the religion broadly. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, we don't intend to mock your faith. No. You know, if you're... If you're into this and i love i mean i i personally uh 
I find the Bible fat. I wouldn't have sat and like reread the New Testament if I didn't think it was really interesting. I didn't have to do that for this episode, I don't think. But I, I find the Bible fascinating. I got my Jesus Christ Superstar shirt on. <laughs> that's um, our preferred depiction. That's my, yeah, it is my preferred depiction of Christ. But So yeah, that, that's not what this is. I don't want the comments to turn into a theological debate. We're talking about the film Passion of the Christ, Mel mm-hmm. Gibson's version of the Passion. Yes. I guess. Yeah, so why do, why do you think it doesn't work for you? Well, for one, the way it's shot is insane. And I guess the entire thing, according to the IMDb trivia, which I have the IMDb trivia page up here, take all of this with a grain of salt because anyone can add whatever the fuck they want to the IMDb trivia. And I feel in in later years, it's IMDb trivia is a little less reliable. I don't fucking look at it. You don't? Nope. Uh, It's not part of my research for kill counts. It's just too unreliable for me. Yeah. But that's the thing is like with this movie, I, I wonder if it's just... If it's the religiosity of all of it, because all the stories surrounding this movie seem like weirdo tall tales, even like (laughs) even not in the IMDb trivia, even like interviews with the actors. And so it's like for this one, I'm like the IMDb trivia. I'm not judging you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Read away. They shot this movie in. Let me try and find. It was in Italy, right? That they shot this whole thing. Oh, did they shoot it in Italy? Yeah. I mean, all the actors were like Italian. Like Monica Bellucci. Yeah, that's <laughs> Ital- right. Like everyone's just a t- either Italian or like the Romans all look like Mel Gibson just cast his bros that he watches football with. <laughs> Some of the Romans look like extras in season two of The Wire. Yes, they look like wire dock workers. They're yeah. just like extremely white dudes that <laughs> are ready to go get a pizza after this movie. <laughs> it's like, it's ridiculous. Also, everyone like... Jim Caviezel got struck by lightning twice making this. The AD got struck by lightning. It's like, what the fuck were you guys doing? Because <laughs> I think it was, they basically... Well, like, they were pro- was it when they were putting that cross up on that hill? Yes! Well, that'll they do made, it. They made Jim Caviezel into a giant lightning ride. <laughs> I can't believe it. Oh, no. Yeah. Um. Oh, man, there's so much trivia. I'm so sorry. They, but they shot this in like a higher frame rate. I wanted to find the actual number. Oh man, this thing looks like a music video. That's what I was going to say. Time. It looks like a fucking music Especially video. Especially in the opening scene, which is at the. Fuck. Uh, it starts with a G. G-, G- the. G- the-, G- the garden. Oh, Gethsemane. 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 Yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they have all those shots where it's like. Gethsemane looks like an Evanescence video. Yeah, because it's, it's like time remapping, good. like an action will go to happen and then slow down mid action. It's the type of of cinematography usually reserved for party scenes in movies from yeah. like 10 years ago. Where it's like panning around the party yeah, and it's like, and it hmm. slows and it and then speeds moves on, yeah. up and then slows. Yeah. But, for sure. Ugh, it's, but then the whole movie is in There's slow-mo. There's a lot of slow-mo, man. And apparently, according to this, it's to emphasize the drama of the action and to give it a heaviness. And, and I'm like, yeah, but I'm bored. <laughs> I was so, this movie's boring. It's boring because I mean, Maybe it's not boring if you're not familiar with the story <laughs> or if you're so into it that you need to see it depicted uh, in graphic detail. Yeah, I guess. But as someone who, you know, grew up Catholic, has heard all these stories, did the Stations of the Cross every year in church, like, I know the beats. I know he falls three times. He gets the help from, like, the fourth or fifth Simon in the story. There's so many goddamn why are, Simons why is everyone in the Bible. Simon? Everyone is Simon. Very up Even the names, Peter's Bible. Simon. Yeah. Peter's, Peter's a, a secret. Simon. He's a secret Simon. <laughs> yeah. Is that Sleepy Pete? Yes. The guy who's sleeping in the beginning? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, like, I know all the beats, so I don't need to have him slow down. Yeah. You know? There's, like, a couple added scenes, like... Pilot's wife gets a little bit more to do. Oh, yeah, what's her name? Claudia. 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 Uh, That's cool. And I we guess. have a scene of her offering Mary and Mary some <laughs> towels to go wipe up. Like, Mary and Mary. Like them wiping up Jesus's blood is not from the Bible. A lot of this is sourced from a, and I forget her name, but she was like a Catholic. Um, I don't know if I was mystic or she was a woman who had like a bunch of visions in the 1600s and people wrote them down and like a lot of Catholics believe in them as true. Oh, okay. And so Mel Gibson used a lot of her accounts and so that's interesting. So there's some stuff in there. Like a lot of the graphic. Is that where the sh- fucking 
insane Satan stuff comes from? Some of it, yeah. Like when Jesus steps on the snake at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Which I thought was funny because, yeah, so Satan is in this movie and that was a big, uh, I remember when the, when this came out, a big thing was the depiction of Satan in this and all the weird, like, the weird hairy baby. The hairy baby, man. And I can't put a lot of clips of this movie in because it's so violent. And, like, I would just have to blur you out the You can put thing. hairy baby. I hope but you put the, the scary kids' faces I'll earlier. Put all, I'll put the hairy baby and, like, all the weird... Or the fucking werewolf that's, that yes, attacks that Judas, Judas under the bridge. What the fuck? at the beginning. Dude, I don't know. What? Hit the fuck? But, yeah, so even at the very beginning, we see Satan, who <laughs> is depicted as androgynous no eyebrows no, kind of uh serpentine face which makes sense well, yeah a little voldemort -y. i mel gibson said yeah it's purposely like which you gotta love like his phrasing of like yeah i want you know just unnatural androgynous like neither male <laughs> nor female i'm like all right and i'm like yo tilda swinton standing right there <laughs> <I again."> know. <laughs> right <laughs> um so we have yes yeah, Satan and then there's a snake crawling on the ground that's like slithering towards Jesus and I think it's funny that I'm pretty sure that the snake crawling toward him is like a corn snake like it's like a yellow it's snake a friendly looking is snake. It, no corn snakes are like the kind that when you have someone come to your elementary school and do a show about reptiles and shit that's the kind of snake <laughs> that you get to pet and like hold that's all Satan was trying to do he man. just was like here look at this snake it's cool <laughs> and he steps on it poor snakes they've had a bad rap I forever know. there's I like snakes. Yeah. I think they're cool. I think they're weird. They had their ancestors had legs and then they decided to get rid of them. It's so That's weird. fucking weird. Yeah. But they like get a bad Like if they rap. weren't so high maintenance, I would totally have a snake. But the cage, set, like just the whole setup, like my sister has a, a gecko and even that, that guy has like a, and a snake. You got to sacrifice other animals too. Yeah. You, you got to be like, I like, I've, I've decided that I will uh, value the life of this snake more than the, the life of this mouse. See a mouse. You can buy him frozen and dead. Oh, frozen and dead. I thought like you buy them frozen and then they thaw out and the mouse is like, oh, like, they're, freedom. A, like they're a fucking bee. <laughs> Oh, yeah, what? Can bees freeze and then my Yeah, my dad's when he was a kid. Oh, because you tie the rope or the string Yeah, you have a pet V. Yeah. You tie a rope, you freeze a V. This is so. This is the shit Such that some parents. 40s bullshit. Did, yeah, no, my dad was born in the 40s, and it's like, this is the <laughs> shit you do, and there's nothing else to do. You you freeze, you, you catch a bee, you put it in the freezer, and then when it's frozen, you tie a little piece of string around it, and then so when it wakes back up, you have a pet bee. That or is some you're, depression era entertainment, man. Yeah. Or if you're a jerk older brother, which I think my dad did also, uh, <laughs> you freeze it and then you like put it on someone's head and then it wakes up. <laughs> Good times. Oh, man. What were we talking about? I don't know how we got <laughs> on the bees. <laughs> bees. We are talking about snakes and bees. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Oh, also Jesus in this. I, I didn't realize they gave Jim Caviezel a fake nose to make him look a bit more ethnic <laughs> yeah, a bit more choose word a bit carefully. more italian <laughs> <laughs> and also the reason his eyes look so fucking weird in this movie is because oh, yeah. he has blue eyes and they instead of i don't i don't understand this at all but instead of making him wear contact lenses they digitally changed his eye color it looks it weird. looks bad yeah I, it looks like. You said it looks like a Twilight thing? Yes, it looks like their eyes in Twilight, like the good vampire, the good vampires all have these kind of glowy brown eyes, like they're, or not brown, they're almost like amber colored, but that's like, his, he looks like a vamp, he looks like a Twilight vampire on top of like, he's, when he's not all, you know, in flashbacks and stuff, he's so perfectly coiffed and, mm -hmm. and made up and he looks just so beautiful and it's weird. I was looking at pictures of Jim Caviezel in real life without the prosthetic and the long hair. It, he looks like a completely different person. Is he Italian? Caviezel sounds. Like I'm not he sure. Could be Italian. Could be. I don't know. I'm not sure. But but like historically, to be accurate, these people would all be Middle Eastern. Right? Yeah, they'd be like Palestinian. Yeah. Like that area. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know it's it's the thing where. It's like how all our uh, depictions of Jesus. I was gonna, He's yeah, like, a white like guy. thousands of years of art of Jesus. That's just a white dude. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. It's yeah, 
to say the least. <laughs> Although, to be fair, like the image I have in my head of Jesus is just Ted Neely, who is like <laughs> clearly the, not. Yeah. He's like super white, so take from that what you will. Um, this flashback right around the beginning, it's after he gets arrested. And this made me laugh so hard because it's such a weird scene to put in that I think was a Mel Gibson creation. Uh, Jesus invents tables. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude. Because what? You said that there was an annotation in the Bible where yes. it mentioned they would mm-hmm. eat on the floor. Like they would sit on the floor and eat on a small yeah, table. Yeah, typically like table. Middle Eastern meals back then. You, yeah, the table's super low to the ground. And you sit on pillows and you kind of recline. Like I think your head is closest to the table and your okay. feet are farther away. That sounds true. And so there's this scene because Jesus was a carpenter. We see him literally invent tables. And Mary's like, why is this table so tall? And he's like... Because they sit on wait. chairs that are tall. Yeah, well, well, you sit on chairs that are tall. And it's, when you think about that logic, it's so crazy. If you if all you grew up with was really low to the ground pillows and tables, and then you just invent something that, you invent a taller table that you then need to invent taller chairs for. It's <laughs> like, dude, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> <laughs> just galaxy brain shit. <laughs> Which I guess is the point, because he literally is galaxy brain. Like, he's God, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's so funny. And it's Mel Gibson apparently said it's, it's like evidence of his uh, his all-knowing, his, his all-knowingness. Like, he is, you know... Yeah, in the director's cut, he's, uh, he's uh, fixing up the internet. And it's like, this is going to be a real big hit. Yeah. Yeah. Shows Jesus' way the business fu- acumen. Way the future. Way the future. A lot of moonshots in this movie. Yeah. Shots of the moon. Yeah. Lots of uh, shots of demon kids that start right around here because Jesus gets taken to the the Pharisees. He gets taken to Caiaphas and Annas, who are not as fun in this as they are in Jesus Christ Superstar. They're the best. I mean, they're, they're part of this where the, yeah, like claims of anti-Semitism and stuff because they are so bloodthirsty in this version. Mm-hmm. And even in... It, Jesus Christ Superstar. I'm going to end up comparing it to that a bunch because those are, these are like now the two movies where I'm most familiar with them uh, or two biblical movies rather. But uh, even in that, you get some conversations between them debating what they should do. And you, you understand that it's like we have to do this because Rome's going to come kick our ass and it's scary. And this is just going to be like so many people are going to die. This feels a bit more like how you know uh we we don't get as much of their their backstory they just seem kind of bloodthirsty and that's about it yeah they feel they just seem threatened and like that's kind of i don't know they're mean they're not as fun they're they, not they're they not don't nice. have the vocal range i'm not <laughs> as into it <laughs> it's before this where they like throw jesus off the side of a wall it, like oh yeah it's almost like mission impossible like where we're uh, They're not like hanging him. Yeah, no, it's like mission, like where to Tom Cruise yeah, like, like falls and like almost hits the floor. Yeah, they do that with Jesus, but like to hurt him. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's when Judas sees the werewolf. Yeah, and Judas is watching, and then this werewolf thing pops up. It scared the shit out of me. Yeah, because you don't expect a fucking werewolf. <laughs> don't expect like a we're not watching the howling you don't expect a werewolf jump scare in a jesus movie no which is why i think when that happened i was like fuck i'm so glad we're i felt i felt really vindicated do you know what i mean yeah it's still not as scary as those fucking kids no and that's that's pretty soon after this there's these kids where this is when judas is like buyer's remorse you know like Mm -hmm. he goes back to the pharisees and he's like please take back my money uh I undo, undo, don't want this, delete. And the Pharisees are like, nope, too late, bye. And then Judas sees these kids who are basically tormenting him. And he tells these kids to fuck off. And these kids' faces turn into like... I don't even know. I don't even know. Are they just old man faces? They're like weird old man faces, but still on kid bodies. Yeah. It's, it's very weird. Horrible. It's very weird. And it scared me. And it like, it not only shocked me when it first happened, but then as I watched it, I just never felt easy or like comfortable with it. It was yeah. constant fear. I just kept thinking about it. And I just kept thinking, what kind of weird shit is going to show up in this? They look like little Isaacs from Children of the Corn. Yeah. Because all I knew, I knew about the the weird baby. In yeah, this. the hairy baby or whatever. But I, I was sad when Judas exits picture real early on. And I was like, there goes all our fun horror stuff. Yeah. Now it's just going to be the torture porn. 
Well, yeah, I mean, we still get Satan. Still get Harry Baby. Harry Baby. Harry Baby, yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, Jesus, or Ju- Judas hangs himself, you know, we all know that part. We all know the all these parts. We all, that's the thing, is like, we, we <laughs> like, how much of this do we need to recap? So he goes to Pilate. Pilate's like, I don't want to. So they go to King Herod, and King Herod sends him back to Pilate. It's like... I've seen all this. The Herod, You're not the, singing, so I'm not as interested. The Herod side quest portion <laughs> yeah. of which Herod's weird because I, I, I get in some things why we go see him, especially in a musical, because he gets to have a musical number and it's fun and it breaks up the seriousness of <laughs> yeah, do, do, do. it breaks up the seriousness of Jesus's trial. You get this kind of comedic relief number, but in this, it just is like what a, the side quest of Herod. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's just Harry being like, I don't care. <laughs> Take him away. So we go back to Pilate and he gets gets sentenced. That's when all the, the, the torture begins. I don't remember how I felt about Pontius Pilate as a kid, but as an adult, at least in these depictions that we're talking about, Passion of the Christ and Jesus Christ Superstar, I always kind of feel for him, you know? Yeah, I, He's yeah. like, I don't wanna I don't wanna do this. Mm-hmm. You guys you guys suck. You guys wanna do this to the guy. Yeah. So I'll wash my hands of it. It's yeah, it's weird. Like growing up and in catechism and stuff, Pontius Pilate was the big bad. Yeah. Um, especially what's the what's the the man? This is how much I did not pay attention. Uh, growing up, what's the thing where it's like the basically it's like Jesus died like uh, he was. Uh, oh, it's like part of the 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 recitation that you said. Yeah. He was like suffered under Pontius Pilate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something like I think that line was is in there. Crucified. Yeah, yeah. So I just. Yeah, so he's As like a kid, the bad I'm like, guy. okay, he's the bad guy. Like he, it's his, his fault. And it's interesting that, yeah, in this, he gets a bit more backstory. Like, they, they afford him the benefit of the doubt more than they do Caiaphas. He may be the, more, the most interesting character in this movie, actually, now that I think For about sure. It. He, yeah, I think so. Because he's, like, the most conflicted, feels the most human. I mean, obviously, Jesus shouldn't feel human. He is being he's yeah. the son of God in the film, so. yeah. Uh, but also the son of man. But that's why like oh, Jesus in so many depictions is really interesting because he is human also. Mm-hmm. And that's why like the musical version <laughs> of him is interesting. Same with Pontius, same with Je- like they're all people. Yeah. But yeah, in this, it's weird how Pilate gets again, that kind of benefit of the doubt where the Pharisees don't, the Pharisees are just like cackling villains. Yeah. And Pilate is conflicted and, yeah, it's it's weird. I also would like to see a flow chart of uh, power. Like, we got a king, and yeah. then he, Pilate's like a governor of sorts? Yeah, so it's like, okay, so it's the Pharisees are the, the high priests. Okay. Herod's the king. Of who, what? Galilee. Okay. So what does area? Galilee encompass? Um, Nazareth and... Would it be comparable Because that's to like, where Jesus is from. Gal- yes. So that's why they take him to Herod. Okay. Um, but Pilate but isn't chilling in Galilee? Pilate is like above both of them, I'm pretty sure. What? Because the Romans occupy that whole area. So it's like, I think technically, I could be okay. wrong here. I'm like, you know, my his- my historical knowledge of this is not great, but I'm pretty sure it's just that whole area is occupied. So like the Romans technically are in charge and that's why the Pharisees are so freaked out by Jesus because they're like if if the Romans see that we're causing trouble and we're like anointing a messiah and a leader they're going to freak. So Pilate is the governor of that area. So he's in charge of them and Pilate answers to the emperor. Okay. Yeah. Who I think at that time is Tiberius. If I I was like just reading the kind of like chain of command there. Okay. Yeah. Cool. As a kid, I found it confusing. Because yeah. I was like, who the fuck's Herod? Why are we going here? I would like a flowchart, yes. A flowchart would be nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, you know, whipping. After all this, he, I mean, Jesus is like ground meat in this. It's disgusting. Yeah. I was reading that it took about eight or so hours, maybe 10 hours to put all the makeup on Jim Caviezel. And sometimes it took so long that they were like, we don't have any time to shoot today. And he would just sleep with it on. That like he would sense. just go to bed with all his makeup on. Yeah. And also a way they did the like the skin ripping, which I thought was interesting. And I thought was a really clever way to do it is they would make him, they would make up Jim Caviezel all 
like this is like post whipping like he's all fucked up Mm -hmm. and they digitally like cleaned up his skin so i think what it would do is when they whipped him then they would just like erase the clean skin so okay. that it just looked like it was ripping away oh, his skin, which I thought was really neat, actually. Like I'll say, like the some <laughs> of the effects in this are like really cool. Like the makeup in this is yeah, well done. The, the... I guess so. Yeah, it's very realistic. It it's, is. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't have like fucking Savini or Dick Smith or someone. Yeah, for doing sure. These effects. <laughs> but then there's some crazy green, sc- not green screen. I don't know what to call it. It's like just weird CG. It's mostly like shots near the end with Satan and hell. Oh, and when stuff. he's in hell. Yeah, <laughs> we have a shot. There's a shot that takes place in hell. I want to see the screenplay where it says interior slash exterior interior hell. hell. Yeah. Because Satan's just screaming up. And lest we forget, there is a apparently a sequel in yeah, development. This was in the, in the news like a couple days ago, and it <laughs> felt so it felt so divinely ordained that we were covering this. <laughs> yeah, apparently Mel Gibson has been working on a sequel for this for years. It's on like the fifth draft or something. I'm, I honestly, I'm there. Like I'm so ex- I hope it gets made. <laughs> but also, I'm a little disappointed that it's not just gonna be revelations yeah I would it's supposed lo- to like, take it's supposed to cover from his resurrection with this movie ends on him like getting which, up which like what is that gonna because in the 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 resurrection and after is Until like he nothing to in the body well it's yeah. three days doesn't he walk on water again right Do- i don't know if he does maybe uh, in like some version doesn't he walk off like a boat on water i don't know man i mean that's before he dies. Well, if you can walk on water, I'm sure you're doing it. A bunch. <laughs> you could do it. He basically, and even then, like all the accounts of it, and each gospel is different. He basically like appears to Mary and appears to some disciples, and it, yeah, it's like not much. Like not much really happens. Well, as we learned from this movie, I'm sure Mel Gibson can make some stuff up. Oh yeah, but it's I don't know. I don't know what else he is going to be covering in this sequel. I just I well, didn't it say something about depicting also through flashbacks the fall of the angels. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, that that I can get down with because that's gonna be <laughs> super cool. I yeah, the more of the weird CG stuff, the better. Like that's a movie I would go see. You know who I would uh, hope uh, show up in it as a stealthy sequel character? Uh, what's his name? Barabbas. 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 Dude. I hope Barabbas shows up and we see what he's up to because oh. that guy had the luckiest day of his life. Honestly. Barabbas is maybe my favorite part of this. And Barabbas is the, or Barabbas, as I pronounce it in the movie. Okay. Maybe we just sound super Midwestern. Probably. Being like Barabbas. Barabbas. Uh, Barabbas <laughs> is basically, Pilate is like, all right, either I uh, sentence Jesus to death or I'm releasing this infamous murderer. No, it's both. It's either I'll release Jesus or if you if you really want oh, me yeah, to I'm sentence sorry. him I've, to I, death, yeah, yeah, you're right. I'll release this dirty, smelly murderer who all of you clearly hate. Yeah. And everyone's like, give us the smelly guy. Yeah, they want Jesus to die so bad that they want, they're want they fine with freeing Barabbas, who is like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. He basically gives Jesus a thumbs up and is like, it's been the best day ever. <laughs> he just guy. is so happy. Yeah, I know. I want to know more about him. Yeah, so bring him in the sequel. Let's see <laughs> a little bit of Barabbas' backstory. Yeah, for sure. Barabbas' backstory. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I got, like, the crown of thorns. Oh, yeah, they uh, fucking pound that into his ooh, head. That's na- yeah, it's very squishy sounding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's all the it's all the stuff you know. It's all the stuff you know, man. Him walking with the cross, him falling down. Yeah, dude, I guess, I guess Jim Caviezel like, actually hurt himself pretty bad this whole movie. Well, I bet they used an actual fucking wooden cross, Probably. didn't they? Probably. Yeah. I, I think he tore his ACL and oh, stuff. Oh, no. Um, yeah, he was hurt really bad this whole Ugh. movie. Like, a lot of him falling and shit is just real like it's man this set sounds like it was miserable <laughs> oh you don't say yeah like I've, him a lot of him up on the cross is him just actually up there well, at least you had mel gibson in charge <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah the, the the stakes going into the hands is really gross That's after they dislocate his shoulder to yeah spread to it out stretch him enough. out to the oh that, that ugh, yeah that and then, so yeah, gross nail it down and There's then, a very cool raindrop shot. Is it cool or is it I an Evanescence it, music video? No, it's very music video. Yeah. But it was it caught my attention. Yeah. I it's was kinda like, neat. Oh, that's something to look at. Cause it's like it's a shot through a 
raindrop as it forms in the air and then it it fall it's it's hard to describe yeah it's yeah it's kind of cool though the two guys getting crucified next to jesus one of them who is just is yelling the whole time and just being a jerk about everything gets his eyes pecked out by a raven bird because god's like quit talking shit about my son yeah shut the fuck out (laughs) pecks out his eyes and it's real gross there's the the earthquake which rips the temple yeah, asunder. Yeah, I forgot about that little detail in the mm-hmm. story. Yep, the earthquake, which I always thought was cool <laughs> as a kid. Like it's just it's like he dies and there's an earthquake. That's so crazy. Yeah, yeah. And that 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 whole effect too. Like we just watched Amadeus and the temple falling down and getting ripped in half looked to me like when. Don Giovanni in that in that opera, the dead soldier like punches through the wall and there's bricks. <laughs> cr- like it just looked the same. <laughs> it just looked so weird and fake. I love it. It's so good. And yeah, that's when there's yeah Satan in hell. Like there's there's like not even that much else to talk about. No, it's just uh, if you want to see a lot of blood, watch this movie. Yeah. He, he is pouring out blood. I want to know because, you know, they all. Well, yeah, have... they stab him with the, the spear. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and that blood goes all over his face. Yeah. Yeah. You I know, forget it, what that guy's name is. Uh, is it the Aben- Abenador or whatever? Mm, no. no, it's okay. not. Uh, yeah, because often when I'm looking at behind the scenes stuff for horror movies, the makeup artists will mention how many gallons of blood they used. I want to know that for this. Yeah. How's it stack up? Yeah, the blood spraying out of Jesus' side is like... It's, yeah, it's like a fucking evil dead gag. It is. <laughs> cool. Passion of the Christ, baby. Yeah. Um, I know that a lot of people like this movie. I find that fascinating. Which, it makes sense, though, that it's so... Pol- I mean, it literally has like a 47 on Rotten Tomatoes, I think. So it's interesting that it's like half and half, which is kind of the... I understand the perspective of if uh, if this is your faith and you believe that, you know, Jesus went through all this and died for our sins and that was his sacrifice to us, that perhaps seeing this depiction is uh, makes for it, – it, it's a valuable experience. And perhaps that's why you like this movie. Yeah. I, totally, I, I understand that I can understand being humbled by it yes. and feeling maybe reaffirmed by it or, you know – some renewed gratitude what my question is and i i would be curious to see if anyone uh fits this bill is if there is anyone out there who is a fan of this movie and yet does not uh subscribe to oh that's theology interesting behind it. yeah if they, if they like it strictly as a movie that i would be very interested to know if that is a person that exists. And then if that person does exist, how familiar with the story were they ahead of time? Because for me, like I said, I was bored during a lot of this because I know the story. I've seen the musical version. Uh, I've read the book. And so this is just me getting the story another time just with a whole bunch of gore added. Yeah. And uh, I'd be very curious to see the different ways that people are fond of this movie. What fascinates me, and this is anecdotal, so take this with a grain of salt, but in my experience, people who love this are religious and truly believe. And all the people I know who love Jesus Christ Superstar are atheists. Oh, all, yeah. all my friends in high school, I like in, in high school, I was religious. I was in like youth groups and shit. And I still went to church. Mm-hmm. Uh, but all my other friends who loved this, who loved Jesus Christ Superstar. And I watched it with a ton. were all atheists. Interesting. Yeah. And, and I have and like I myself, like I am not a believer anymore. But like I still the 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 character of Jesus and the person that he is, I still find inspiration in Mm -hmm. like even reading certain passages in the in the new testament when i was i was like i i understand why you know i i had faith for so long i didn't go through the high school atheist i like gradually kind of stopped believing i never had a moment where i was like this is dumb fuck this lucky you (sighs) you don't have to think back to that period yeah but like (laughs) 
I also never had. I grew up with a very tolerant view of Christ. Yeah, your your uh, congregation seemed like it was more loose and liberal. Yeah, we mm. had our Catholic Church was weird. We had women lead mass, which the Catholic Church is not a, like it was a thing where I think if like <laughs> yeah, the, the, the church, the capital C church, found out, they would be pissed. <laughs> So I grew up with kind of a loosey goosey interpretation of of the Bible, and again, like my parents would never have let me go see this. It, especially my mom, you know, is like, no, we we focus on the good things he did, and we don't need to be guilted into because she grew up like uber Catholic and mm-hmm. went to Catholic school. I think she just didn't want to do that to me, you know, like. And then my dad was never religious, like at all. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, we had uh. A lot of actually really good discussion in the comments for the platform, Mm -hmm. which I really enjoyed reading. Uh, Some like substantive, substantive, Mm -hmm. uh, substantial comments that I got to read and, you know, uh, gave me food for thought. So I would love to have the same thing here. Yeah. And yeah, bring Jesus Christ Superstar into it, too, because like obviously we reference that a lot. It's a movie that's important to both of us and we watch it frequently. So uh, if you feel uh strongly one way or the other on either of those films let us know why and your background just because i'd like to have that information yeah i'm i'm so curious that like certain depictions of christ like he it like that story is so universally appealing to so many different kinds of people and it's interesting what versions of him are most appealing to different types of people like yeah. which version of christ appeals to what kind of person i just like that he's got this story with all these little uh I don't know. There are, there are a whole bunch of like sub stories involved that are really recognizable. Mm-hmm. And so like, you know, you can turn uh, to feed everybody with a couple of loaves of bread and some fish. Like that's fun. And then, you know, he's got his, uh, his blood into wine thing. That's, that's a thing. Like yeah. there's whole, so many little aspects. It's, it's like how we talk about <laughs> and here. I don't know if anyone's ever compared Jesus to jigsaw before, uh-huh. but like when we talk about saw, we're like, he's got all these weird things. He's got a puppy. He's got uh, traps. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. got, t- it's like, Jesus has got a whole bunch of different things to like, he's like a about. weird perverted version of Jesus. I wonder oh, how John much Kramer is. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like, cause he even has his own, like, kind of disciples, disciples and <laughs> yeah. his whole philosophy and if you must adhere to it or yeah it I want that would be an interesting reading of, of those movies hmm. uh yeah that, that's that's interesting but yeah let's yeah chill discussions like not I don't want to like discussion or like debate theology necessarily but like mm-hmm. yeah I'm, I'm curious like where you come from like what your religious background is what versions of the story are interesting to you? Yeah, I want I want to hear from the people who are not religious at all, but really like Passion of the Christ. <laughs> yeah, are you out there? Do you exist? I I don't know. That's let's tough. find out. Interesting. But be civil, you know. Yeah. Everyone be nice to each other. Because yeah, like again, <laughs> I want to reemphasize this episode was not to like make fun of anyone. Yeah. And, like because obviously yeah, faith like, is a very personal thing. Everyone. Yeah, I mean, again, I grew up with the faith, even though I don't necessarily believe anymore. Like, I still have so many of my, like, I have, like, a an old Jesus necklace that was my grandpa's, and I have, like, St. Francis stuff. Like, there's still, like, things from it I still feel personally inspired by, even if the belief isn't there anymore. But the idea of, like, forgiveness and mercy and um, spending time with those that maybe society looks down upon and... Uh, generosity and you know not spending your whole life accumulating wealth or having that be the most important thing like I think those are like really beautiful things and I still like as an adult I still though I still feel inspired by that yeah I don't think I would ever be able to completely divorce myself from like the teachings of the faith even if like I don't think the Bible is necessarily literally true. Yeah. But there's a reason that like, yeah, it's It's a reason it's so popular. There's a reason it's it sells so many damn copies. (laughs) Uh, Maybe I'll give it a read sometimes. It's just so long. Honestly, the Old Testament is a slog. Old Testament is kind of a slog. I do. I do eventually want to like just sit and read it. But New Testament was pretty easy breezy. Well, I'm surprised at how short of this giant book. Uh, the New Testament com- yeah, prizes. It's, it's, it's just not. Like, it's just like the end of it. Yeah, it's not a lot. Yeah, it's a very... Which is fascinating. It's like 20% of it, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, well, cool. Happy Easter, everybody. Yeah, happy Easter. I'm glad we got to do this for like a little Easter episode. Yeah, it was chill. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Um, Hopefully we didn't get ourselves canceled today. I don't think we'll, we'll get ourselves canceled. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed.
Ah. As I punch my microphone. There you go. You almost made it, and then you made that joke. (laughs) Canceled. (laughs) No, but see, the thing is, is like Jesus wouldn't cancel anyone. (laughs) He forgives. You're right. He wouldn't. He forgives. Yeah. Um. Cool. Next week. It's the 100th episode of the Demi podcast. And it's another bit that we're committing to. That's all I'll say about that for you. <laughs> so we'll see you then. Yeah. But until then, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. <laughs> and this has been the Dead Meat Podcast. Yeah.